What's up guys, Silver here with another Halo Infinite Achievement Guide. This time we're doing part two of our Halo Infinite walkthrough on Lasso, so let's get to it. We're going to spawn in here. This is the mission foundation, and we're immediately going to go to the left here and jump off the side. We'll shoot our grapple towards the right so we can swing off this ramp structure, and then we're going to actually go towards the left, so grapple towards this floating platform here. We're going to jump off to the left again, and we're going to grapple up to this structure, and then we'll grapple down towards these broken up items on the left. There's a bunch of Forerunner material over here kind of floating on its own. So just run along these. I turn on my flashlight because it is dark over here. And we're actually going to grapple up. We're going to run, jump, and grapple up to this small ledge over here. So we're going to grapple up. And you can see I'm landing on this very narrow uh, structure here. But we'll just wrap around here. And you get a checkpoint about here. From here, we want to head in the direction I'm looking while staying above a certain height. We don't want to go any lower than this line I'm showing on the screen right now. It's tough to tell because it's dark over here and it's a little far away. But right at this line, the coloring changes slightly on this structure along with its angle. You could grapple across from here while staying above this threshold, but an easier way to do this to ensure you don't fall below that level is to grapple up the column we're currently standing on and then head across. So looking back, you can see the line is down there now. We're a little higher up, so it's going to be easier to stay above that line. So we'll jump out in that direction, and we will use these structures on the right side to grapple off of. So just keep grappling off these things on the right side. Once you get close to the wall we're swinging towards, you want to turn into the right and head right into the corner right up against the wall here. You'll probably notice there is nothing to land on here, but there's actually a nice big flat chunk of invisible geometry, so don't worry about that. From this point, you want to turn into the corner, and we're actually just going to grapple up to the top here. You can see there's some weird gaps in the walls here, but we're going to just grapple up here and just go straight up to the top, and we'll clamber up onto the top here. And then we're going to turn to the left once we do get up. And this hexagon I'm zoomed in on right now, we actually want to get underneath this hexagon. So we're going to go over there and drop down and then swing underneath it. But don't go directly at it. You want to kind of curve in from the right side so you avoid being in the soft kill zone as long as possible to give yourself as much time as you can. Turn to the right and grapple off this wall and then turn to the right again and you will be able to get into this window here. And you have now skipped all of the enemies in the first section of the mission here. Here it is again in slow motion. Drop down. Once we get underneath this hexagonal column, we're going to turn to the right and grapple off this surface here on the right side. And then we'll turn a little more to the right and you'll see the window right in front of you here. So grapple through. Here's an alternate way I used to do this before I really knew exactly where that window in the wall was. I basically just got to the wall where the window was, and at least that gets you out of the soft kill zone. So then you have all the time in the world to find the window, and I essentially just dropped down until I saw the window fly past me, and then I grappled in from there. Do be aware, though, that there is a hard kill zone pretty quickly after you get past the window. So if you fall too far down below the window, you will die. This next skip is a lot more straightforward. You just have to grapple up the left side of the wall here. Or you could grapple up the right side, but the left side is closer from the start, so I just do that. And we're avoiding a lot of enemies we'd have to fight down below. So typically you would just kind of walk across a bunch of light bridges down there and fight a bunch of the banished. But we're just going to stay up here. And you can see we're going to land up at this light bridge up at the top, which we would typically have to take a gravity lift down below, which is fairly heavily guarded. But we're just going to avoid all these enemies that we would typically have to deal with, except for we do actually want to go down and kill one elite. So follow this path I'm taking. We're actually going to get to the top of the grav lift we would have taken to get up here. But before heading in, you want to verify what gun you have out. So I'm going to shoot my gun before heading inside. I see I have my plasma pistol out, so I switch to my battle rifle. You want to make sure you do this before going in here because you don't want to alert the enemies to your presence. So we're going to go down here. You can see this elevator shaft has a bunch of ridges on the side of it, so we're going to just use that to drop down slowly. No rush here. You could use your grapple as well to pull yourself closer so you uh, ensure that you land on the ridges instead of flying off. And uh, we'll just continue down here. And then once we get close to the bottom here, you can see there's a, a bigger shelf right here, which I like to land on. And then if you look at the grav lift, you can see it's surrounded by a spinal structure. So I jump up and grapple to one of the vertebrae-esque nubs on the side here. And then I'll turn around and look at the enemies below. They are not aware I'm up here, so that means they don't have any of their energy shielding activated. So they are going to be easy one-shot kills to the head. There's a handful of grunts and jackals down here, but the two enemies we're interested in are the two elites. And these elites will be the white ultra elites, and they're going to have heat waves and swords. The reason we're doubling back here and not skipping all of these enemies entirely is because we want one of those swords. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wait until one of those elites walks up towards the gravity lift, gets close enough where I could feel comfortable shooting one, and then dropping down immediately, exchanging my plasma pistol for the sword, and then jumping right into the grav lift and running away. But you can see now these guys are walking around a little bit. Sometimes you have to wait longer than other times for them to move into a good position. But this guy looks pretty good now, so I'm going to headshot him, like I said. Immediately drop down and switch to my plasma pistol so I could get that sword. And I'm going to jump right into the lift 
and right when you get to the top of the lift, you're not entirely safe because a lot of times the enemies will be startled and not shoot at you right away, but they'll throw a grenade possibly and it will come right up the lift just like that. So don't feel like you're safe just because you got into the lift and you're not getting shot at yet. Immediately move out here. You want to make sure that you have a sword and a battle rifle at this point. We could get a new plasma pistol later on in the mission, but for now we want a sword and battle rifle. If you have those two things, you can move on to this next section. A quick note about the grapple shot is it does not obey the laws of physics. It just goes wherever you look. So even though you might grapple in one area, if you look to another area, that's where it will take you. So that's what I'm going to be doing up here a little bit. So we're just going to open this door, jump off to the left, and then we're just going to grapple along the bottom of this structure. All the enemies up at the top can't shoot at us from here. We're just going to continue grappling until we hit this wall. And you want to basically get in right here and stand on this ledge for a little bit. You could hear the door above us opening. That's why we don't go directly to it because it has to take some time to open up. So once it's open, you could grapple the underside here and then immediately do a 180 and grapple the ledge and just sling yourself towards this door that is now open. And then we can move to the next section. So you can see what I'm talking about when I say that the grapple shot doesn't actually take you where the grapple is anchored. A quick replay here of that 180 I did will show that even though I grappled to a flat vertical surface, I wasn't pulled directly to that surface because I was looking above it, so I could whip myself up and over it by doing that. You can manipulate where you actually go by just looking where you want to go instead of being entirely reliant on where you actually anchored your grapple shot. We'll skip ahead because there's some cutscenes and a gondola ride here. We'll move on past all these ghostly John 117 children. And here you want to take out your sword because we want to melee one of these enemies at least to get our shield back because you probably took some damage along the way. Once you do get your shield back, you could head back towards the gondola to probably get a checkpoint. I'm just going to move on to the next part though. I'm going to grapple up here and use these structures to grapple up to the ceiling. Say hello to the cowbell skull up here. And then we're just going to Spider-Man our way across the ceiling here. And if you do fall far from the ceiling, there's some structures surrounding it that could get you back up there. And we're going to land on this platform. Walk up to the pedestal and hit the action button. There will be a cutscene here that I'm going to skip. A light bridge will activate in front of you as you come out of the cutscene. So we're just going to travel across this and I'm going to speed this part up. We'll go through a couple hallways, we'll go through a room or two, and we'll get to this room that has a big blue beam of light going across the top of it. And you typically get through this room by placing the weapon in a couple of the pedestals throughout this room, which gets her to activate some bridges. But that also spawns in enemies, so we're just going to grapple across these gaps since we have a much more powerful grapple than we usually would at this point in the campaign. Just run and jump towards one of these columns, grapple off of it that will swing you towards the other side, and that will get you close enough to the other side where you could simply just grapple one more time and pull yourself up and head to the next section. In here, across the room, there's going to be one grunt that has a bunch of weapons, one of those grunts that just carries a bunch of stuff around, and we're going to kill him, and we're going to take his plasma pistol. So we're going to juggle the plasma pistol to the final room so we could use that against all these shielded grunts. So you could take this guy out with a battle rifle burst to the head if you want. You could also use your sword against him if you feel like you don't have a full shield at this point, so you could get some checkpoints later on. Once you juggle up towards this next door, you want to have your battle rifle ready because there's going to be a brute that's looking at you. But you have a couple seconds to start laying into him, and once you do, he starts getting staggered, so he can't really get a shot off. So just shoot him in the head, knock off his helmet, and then finish him with a headshot with your battle rifle. We're going to continue juggling this plasma pistol up towards this grav lift that's not active yet. we got to go up to where that brute was and grab a power seed. So grapple up here, grab the power seed, and then we'll jump back down and shove it in this slot here. Now the grav lift is active, so I'm going to juggle my plasma pistol into the grav lift. Just chuck it in there, and it will go up. And then you could jump in the lift and follow that plasma pistol up. So we have a plasma pistol that we're juggling forward, and we still have our battle rifle and a sword at this point. Once we get to the top of the lift, the plasma pistol will be in front of us, so we're just going to continue juggling this forward. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit here to the point where we come across a dead Spartan, and we're going to juggle our plasma pistol past the dead Spartan up towards the door that we're going to eventually uh, go through after we get this upgrade from this dead Spartan. So we put the plasma pistol up by the door. Now we'll go back here and hit the action button to trigger this sequence where we get this upgrade. Skipping ahead, we'll get a pop-up saying, hey, good job, shield core installed. So you can upgrade this shield now as we go through the campaign. But we're going to move ahead. There's going to be a grunt that spawns in. You could sword him if you want to get shield back if you need to. But now we're going to juggle our sword and plasma pistol. And we still have our BR as well in our back pocket. So just juggle this as quickly as you can up the ramp to the right here. And we're going to make a little campsite up here. We're just going to camp up here for a little bit. Immediately, you want to look ahead and take out the Jackal with the Stalker Rifle because those guys can take you out real quick. And then we're going to look across to the left. There's going to be a Jackal in the same spot on the opposite side of the room here. Also with a Stalker Rifle, so you want to make sure you take those two guys out as quickly as possible. And now, as promised, we're going to be doing a little bit of camping here. So there's a bunch of enemies in this room, and we need to kill all of them, unfortunately. We can't just skip ahead. We could skip past them, but at some point, we actually do have to kill them to trigger the final boss battle in this mission. So we're just going to take these guys out 
as best we can from here. Due to the Thunderstorm Skull, we know all the grunts have shielding, so we're going to have to use the noob combo to take those guys out. You could just lay into them with a battle rifle, and you could actually collapse their shields uh, with less than a full clip of battle rifle ammo. So that is an option, especially with the bandana skull on. You have unlimited uh, ammo, so that is helpful. Um, but we're just going to mostly just noob combo these guys, which, if you don't know, is overcharged plasma pistoling, uh, shielded enemy that collapses their shields, and then you can just headshot them with the battle rifle to finish them off. And we will keep our sword close by so we could sword enemies as they get close to us. And uh, that way we keep our shield up. And we do need to keep an eye on where the sword is because that's going to make the Tremonious battle a lot easier. Another tip for this part is to not exclusively be looking at one part of the map because the enemies could come up around behind you or something if you're just looking straight ahead. If I'm just looking through this tunnel like I am right now and not ever looking to my left or anything or behind me, there could be enemies that just flank me and either shoot me or just throw a grenade or something. So you can see I backed up, looked over there, made sure there wasn't a grunt that was, you know, coming up behind me or anything. And so just always be, you know, looking out, always be moving around. Don't stand still or anything like that, especially when you're out uh, more in the open like I am now. You can see I'm not really ever standing still uh, in case an enemy spots me uh, from the side and throws a nade or shoots me or something. The next position we're going to take is down where that jackal is and down where that fusion coil is. So we want to blow up that fusion coil before we actually get down to it. You can see it actually ricocheted and shot me right in the face, basically. So I took a little bit of damage there. So uh, when you're doing that, you want to make sure that you don't do that, ideally. So back up a little bit more than I did uh, before shooting it. Make sure, you know, you could barely see it and you could shoot it and then back away before it has a chance to ricochet into your face. Uh, but this is our next position. You want to be even more aware of your surroundings at this point because enemies can come up from behind you uh, where we just came from, essentially. They could be in front of you and also they could be to the right of you now because there's a doorway in the wall to the right of me uh, where enemies like to come down. Usually a couple grunts come down at some point throughout this encounter, so... Be ready for them. You could use your sword to get your shield back from those guys, or you could just headshot them after you plasma pistol them. Either way, however you want to do it, but just be aware. Always be looking around. Always be looking uh, to that door on the right because enemies like to walk on down. It's like the price is right. They're just coming on down, placing bids. Somebody says $1. Everyone hates that guy. But you can see I stunned that guy with a plasma pistol burst, and then I grappled to him so I could more quickly close the gap and slice him to death. So that's just a more efficient, safer way to get in there and get your shield back. There's probably another guy here. Here we go. We'll take this guy out with a BR to the face, and then we'll just move up. Ideally, you'll be clearing out the enemies, and there shouldn't be too many enemies behind you, if any. We're essentially just slowly making our way down the length of the room, clearing out all the enemies as we go. So we're not ever, you know, surrounded or overwhelmed at any point. So you can see I was uh, basically taken off guard by a grenade that was thrown around the corner. So another thing you could do with the grapple shot is to use it kind of to dodge things. So you can see there I was uh, in danger of getting hit with a plasma grenade. So I just jumped and grappled away. So I just kind of zipped away from that dangerous uh, area for a second. And then uh, we took him out. Then we noob comboed him for his efforts. So we're just going to juggle up here to our third position, we'll call it. Because it is the third. And we're going to just make sure we keep track of that sword. Because uh, it could actually be grenaded and then just fly to another part of the map. So you just want to kind of be checking on it. Check on the status of the sword every once in a while. If you haven't seen it in a while. Give it a call. At least a text message, for God's sake. So at this point, we've almost made it to the other side of the room where the elevator is looming ominously. And there's going to be a handful of additional enemies over here. Basically the same thing we've been doing. More grunts, more jackals. The jackals with the plasma pistols and the blue shields are the lowest priority because they only have the plasma pistol and they can't throw grenades while the grunts can throw grenades. So that's not good. And they could, of course, shoot you. And then the jackals with the orange shields have the manglers so they could dish out a lot more damage a lot faster. So those are definitely the ones to ignore are the, the blue shielded jackals. So... Take them out essentially last, except for you want to leave one grunt alive at the very end so you can get your shield back. The jackals, for some reason, don't give you a shield 100% of the time when you hit them. It might be because when you smack them, you don't hit them, actually. You hit their shield sometimes. And when you hit their shield, it might actually not give you any shielding back through the Black Eye Skull, and it could kill them. So it's a strange thing that happens sometimes where you kill the jackal via melee, but it doesn't actually count towards the black eye recharging your shield. So be aware of that. You want to save one grunt, ideally, for the final enemy so you could smack him and get your shield back through that guy. But anyway, you can see the last 30 seconds, 45 seconds or so, is a good example of what not to do in this area. You can see I was getting a little impatient and taking the fight to them more so than just allowing them to slowly reveal themselves and I could easily just pick them off one by one 
Fortunately, there's a lot of nooks and crannies and escape routes in this area. You can see I threw a panic grenade just to distract them and get them to dodge around and stop shooting at me. And then I went down uh, through the underside of this area. There's a lot of area underneath where I am right now where I kind of retreated to because uh, all the enemies are on top. So we took out that guy. That was the last guy. I made sure I smacked him to take him out so I have a full shield so I'll get a checkpoint. And I'm juggling my plasma pistol here. That is an old strat I used to do that is not necessary anymore. I'm not even going to use it for this uh, this strategy that I'm about to do. So we're going to go in here now. I'll skip ahead. I'll trust you know what to do. Go grab the power seed and come back to this room. We'll place the power seed we just retrieved from that room into the receptacle over here to power on the elevator. And then we'll activate the elevator itself so we could get the boss battle to start up. But before we do that, I'm going to switch my grenade type to the dynamo grenades, the electrical grenades essentially, so I could potentially stun Tremonius during the fight and then I could close the gap and kill him more easily. You don't really need the dynamo grenades, but I like to equip them anyway. Also, you want to move this fusion coil because this is about where you spawn in and we're going to take cover right behind this thing. So you don't want to have an explosive device right next to you in case he throws a grenade or something and it goes off and kills you. So we want to go into this fight with our battle rifle equipped. So have your battle rifle out and then a sword in your back pocket. We'll trigger the cutscene and then we'll skip it. Immediately move to the right and put these crates to the left side of you for cover, and you can take out these two jackals pretty safely right off the bat. At this point, it's just you and Tremonius now one-on-one. -on -one. Sometimes he likes to close the gap, which I actually prefer. Other times he just drifts behind the elevator for a little bit, so that's what's happening here. If he comes at you, you could just sort him to death, just kind of wait behind the crate until he turns around the corner and then just start sorting him. And if he goes back behind the elevator like this, you could throw some dynamo grenades perhaps to try to stun him, and then you could close the gap at that point and start sorting him. Or you could patiently wait for him to just come over on his own, which is fine. And you can see here that it's actually a really good strategy to sort him because it does a lot of damage It stuns him so he can't really shoot you that much and it also gets your shield all the way back up Ideally you want to get him up against the wall so you could keep sorting him and he doesn't fly up into the air like this I kind of keep smacking him up into the air like a balloon And if you do have him on the ground with you, you want to keep kind of circling around him rather than just standing in one spot And lastly you want to hit the melee button to use the sword rather than the button you typically would use to fire a gun by simply hitting the melee button, you carry less momentum so you don't actually smack them just away from you. You want to keep them as close to you as possible. But that's the go-to lasso strat as of right now for Tremonius. Not too difficult, might take a couple tries, but fortunately there's no iron skull in Infinite, so we don't have to deal with that nonsense. The weapons you want to take to the next mission are the sword and battle rifle, so you should have those in hand already. Head to the elevator, activate the lift, it will take you up to the next mission. That is the end of this one. I'll see you guys for the next one, Outpost Tremonius. Thanks for watching guys, if you found that video helpful be sure to click on the scorpion icon to subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. You could also check out some related guides by clicking on the videos on screen and you could find links in the description for other social media links of mine. Stay tuned for more Halo guides and I'll see you in the next one.